What's up y'all, it's your girl Stephanie and today I am sharing my bridesmaid makeup with y'all. Jen's wedding is coming up pretty soon and I wanted to practice this look one time before the big day and I thought, why not film it? This makeup has got to do a lot of things. First of all, there needs to be longevity. This makeup has got to last all day long. It has to be like heat and sweat proof, also like oil proof, not oil proof, but you know, it's gotta help me keep those oils at bay and it has to look really good in photos. So it's gonna be a little bit more full coverage than my typical makeup, but I really think I got the formula down. So before we get into it, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below, come join the sisterhood, no matter your true pronoun or gender identity, come join the family. And remember to press that little bell button to get my notifications. All right, let's get started. We're gonna start off with the bases. Here I have the YSL Touche Clap Blur Primer. I'm like two thirds done with this actually. I really like this primer. It's just very smoothing, helps the makeup go on nicely. I just did one pump. I'm going over every little inch of my face here. And you know what? I'm actually gonna put a little bit extra on my nose. I learned this from one of my friends, like, cause sometimes my little nose pores kind of show through. And if you just put a little bit extra on the nose, then it helps just like smooth that out. Even especially if I um, wanna put like some highlighter on there. Cause I always like that look that's so cute when girls put highlighter on there, but for me it like accentuates my like pores and my blackheads on there. So just got a little bit more and you just like tap it on there. It might spread around a bit, but that's what we're going with for now. And then putting the rest down the neck too. For the eyes, I am using the Too Faced Shadow Insurance Classic. And I'm gonna just do a bit on the eyes and like into the brows as well. That also just helps my eye makeup just not crease. And priming just helps with the longevity of your makeup. And of course I moisturize before all this as well. The base is very important. If the base is good, the makeup will go on much more smoothly and evenly. So you know what? I'm not even really using a uh, foundation. I'm actually using two different concealers here. These are the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in Super Coverage. Man, I've been loving these. So the two I have here are Nude and Light Beige. Nude is gonna be going underneath my eyes and Light Beige is gonna kinda be going all over my face. My face is much lighter than the rest of my body cause I got a little tan in Bermuda. It's definitely faded since my trip, but um, yeah, I still need to kinda try and match that as much as possible. So we're just gonna be doing actually Light Beige first. I, I haven't really put this all over my face yet, but I think that this is gonna work. So I'm just gonna be doing this and really just sticking this all over. I know so many people have been loving this concealer and a lot of people will do exactly like what I'm doing right now. Okay, I think that is good. And I am now just going to pat it all in Oh my gosh, oh my God. I'm gonna pat it all in with my beauty blender, which has been dampened. The formula of this concealer is so smooth. It's amazing. It does feel a little bit weird for me though, cause like I don't really do full coverage foundation. Feels a little bit weird for me to put like a darker color like on my face too. Usually I am pretty pale all over my body. So it's something that I have to get used to. And I think this is a good match in terms of color. I have a couple other options that I might try out, but right now I think that this is good. Wow. Like honestly, I didn't even use that much product and you can really see how it already has smoothed out so much. This stuff is incredible. And like, I don't wanna go full mask. Some people might think this is like a full mask, but I know a lot of people who go way more in than this. But this can just really help all the oil stay in my face and just keep my skin look really smooth because when it comes to photos, like your skin can look really nice in real life and just very natural, but in the photos, it can look really splotchy. So that's why I wanted to do like a nice thin, even layer of this, which 
will make a big difference in the photos. All right, now we're gonna go in with nude. I'm just gonna wipe off some of the excess there. Go under my eyes like that. Ooh, and then I'm gonna go down my nose a little bit. Just like that. Go ahead and blend that out. Typically, like on a day-to-day, -day, just for normal makeup, ooh, kind of put a lot there, but it's okay. Um, I'll just put this on. So I will just go like under my eyes or even, I'll use the other color for just like blemishes, but I don't put it like all over my face like this. Um, but yeah, I'll just use this under my eyes, down the bridge of my nose, and then I'll go in with the powder. I'll, like, I'll bake and then I'll go in with my powder, my Bobbi Brown that I'll show you in a second, which I'm sure if you've watched my videos, you will recognize a bunch of these products because I am a repeat offender. If I like something, I'm just gonna keep using it, you know? If it works with my skin. And this concealer has 100% been working with my skin. I haven't touched anything else since I got this, like what, over a month ago? At least maybe like a month and a half ago, actually. I love it. Okay, so I think that is good right now. And now we're gonna go in with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. Just gonna shake it up a little bit, pat it down. And I'm gonna dip in with my Beauty Blender and lock this all in. This step is so crucial for me. Oh my gosh. This was like a game changer when I started doing this. You know what I wanted to try is actually, you know, some people put powder on before they do their liquid foundation. I really wanna try that out. But this is just so important for uh, my makeup's longevity because if I don't do this, I become oil slick in a matter of like an hour and it just, it just gets splotchy. And even with the best concealer, you know, that's gonna happen with an oily person. So I, I honestly pretty much put this all over my face. Okay, and I'm just gonna, whatever that all in between. Especially for a day like this when there's so many photos, I need to be as matte as possible. Cause my oils are gonna show through for sure, but if I can just like prevent as much as possible. For some reason when I take photos or when there's like a photo situation or taking video like this, I just get so much more oily than if I were just like hanging out. It's really weird. But okay, while that is all happening, I'm gonna do my eyes and I'm gonna do my brows. So for eyes, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I have this Soft Glam Anastasia Beverly Hills palette and I'm gonna grab the color Burnt Orange and I'm just gonna be putting that all over the lid and underneath as well. Grab in a nice fluffy brush and dipping in. And I'm just gonna in here like that. This is just like a color that I really like that just works for me, I feel like, and it's a tried and true kind of look. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you have seen this look for me before, but I'm gonna be adding a couple things to it to make it a little bit more special. But I don't know, this kind of day is not a day for me to super experiment with, uh, you know, different methods and different colors. <laughs> I'm still working on blending, but I'm just gonna go on the other side do the same thing. Kind of concentrating like on this outer corner and then once that color dispersed and like move up a little bit. And just very light circular motion with the brush. Sometimes I feel like I can forget and be a little bit heavy handed, but if you just really light and you try and touch it on the skin as lightly as possible, that's how you get like a nice blended look. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna grab a regular eyeshadow brush and I'm just gonna grab that color and pack it on. And then we're gonna blend a little bit of the edges more. Ooh, man, this is, this shadow's crazy, it's so opaque. I just like touched it one time and so much color comes off, okay. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna drag it underneath as well touching it to the very corner of the brush. That and then, oh my gosh, that's a lot. Drag it under like that. And 
we don't really have to go all the way to the inner corner because I'll be adding something else there. Going back in with my fluffy brush, I'm just gonna blend that out. Keep on blending. To add something a little bit more interesting up top, I'm going in with this ColourPop Super Shock Shadow Ultra Glitter in Heine. <laughs> it's kind of like pinky uh, coppery. I'm just gonna grab my finger. This is actually my first time doing this, but I thought it might look cute, so. Just gonna place that, ooh. Ooh, that's cute. On top of that right there. I don't know how far, you know, I'm gonna bring it to the inner corner. And keep patting, and maybe I'll just like kind of slowly walk out, disperse it with my finger up top too. That's pretty. It's like a nice, just glittery accent right there. I was gonna use, hmm. You know, I'm still gonna use a Stila on the inner corner of the bottom lash line, but I like this for the top. It's not as flashy as like putting the Stila all up top as well. It's just subtle and nice. And now I'm gonna go in with Stila. I grabbed Bronze Bell. I was gonna do Kit and Karma. I couldn't really find it though. So we're just gonna do a bronze bell this time around, see how it goes. It's a little bit of a, a darker bronzy color than Kitten Karma. But I think it's gonna look cute too. Yeah, there we go. I actually like it. It's like um, a different kind of sparkle, much more silver than the top. I'm just carefully placing that right there. It is a bit dark, but I think I can definitely work with it. Once the mascara and everything's on, I actually really like that. It's like a Nice contrast from like the very light glitter and then it's chunkier glitter. Yeah, I'm feeling this already. The final thing except for like mascara and lashes that I'm gonna be doing to the eyes is adding some of this, which is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in Lucky. It is like a bronzy uh, eye pencil, but there are some silver glitters in there as well. I'm gonna do the inner waterline and upper as well with this. Ooh, hard to talk and do this at the same time. It's just like a very similar tone, maybe even a little bit darker than the shadow that I use. It actually really matches the bronze bell on the inner corner really well. Right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do my eyebrows. Uh, I'll be using my Anastasia products I always use. This was like my broken um, brow is in granite as well as the brow powder duo in granite. I like to do uh, my lashes last, so we're gonna do that at the very end. So I will be right back with my brows done. Eyebrows are done. I also decided to add a little bit more of this color pop to the inner corners. I just kinda like made it come out a bit more so the inner tear duct was a little bit shinier. By the way, my nails right now, do you see those? I love them right now. I got them done at Nailbox LA. It's in the Arts District in Los Angeles. It's just like a nice like shimmery pink, it has Silver shimmers in there. And then I added kind of like random little stars in there. Think for, you know, a nice wedding nail. Jen and I went yesterday, yeah, yesterday to go get our nails done um, before her Korean blessing, which was so much fun. It was amazing just like being present and being there with all of her family. Oh, it was like the sweetest thing. We had the best time ever. Anyways, okay, so now that I have my eyes pretty much done, like I still am gonna do like, some highlight um, and then the lashes, of course. I'm gonna wipe off the bake. It's been on for enough time. I don't wanna leave it on for like way too long. It might have been on for a little bit too long at this point because sometimes if you leave it on for too long, it can cause like a white cast in photos. You have to find like that sweet spot. For me, it's like five minutes, but I think I left it on for more than five minutes just because I was filming and not paying attention. But it's okay, because today's not, um, you know, the day of the wedding. But I'm just wiping this off, just like with a little fluffy brush. And I am gonna be layering on top, lots of layers. The Bobbi Brown Skin Weightless Powder Foundation in Warm Natural 4.5. And this one is even like a little bit darker than what my face looks like now, so it will match this a little bit better. I don't know, I'm just so fearful of putting like a, a much darker color on my skin since I do like to do such thin layers. But I feel like this really ties it in together. Yeah, sometimes I see YouTubers who like um, do like 
spray tans and stuff and they just like go in on the foundation of their face is like so much darker than the actual color of their face and that I don't know I'm just not that brave yet so <laughs> hopefully in the pictures my skin on my face won't be too much lighter than the rest of my body and I'm using a uh, Real Techniques buffing brush I've had this brush y'all since San Francisco since I lived in San Francisco it this brush has lasted me for at least four years and I use it so much. Very good investment. All the writing has just, you know, wiped off, but the brush is going strong. We are now moving on to bronzing and blushing. Here I have my MAC Aaliyah Baby Girl Bronzing Powder. I talked about this in my June favorites. Yeah, I think my June favorites. I love this. I also use this on my eyes all the time. Just like a nice warm bronze with like a little bit of shimmers in there, like a little bit of highlight. This really thins it out, but if you put it on your eyes like with a regular eyeshadow brush, the color really comes through. But I like this because for me, for my skin tone, it's very layerable. It doesn't just like kind of splotch a bunch of bronzer on my skin that doesn't disperse. It disperses really well. And I typically just do like two or three little like light just bloops into the powder and then I blend, blend, blend. And at this point, just kind of blend some up top, the excess that's on the brush. And then underneath my jawbone, sometimes for this one I'd grab a little bit more. I wanna carve out that jaw a little bit. <laughs> okay, let me go in on the other side. I feel like this is the kind of makeup that I have done. It's like a version of the makeup that I always do. A little bit more full coverage. I pretty much did like this for my girl Emily's wedding that I was in. I've been in, I'll be in three weddings this year and I've never been in a wedding um, before this year. I was in my cousin's wedding. He's like my brother as a groomsman, which was super fun. I got to wear like a beautiful suit and I, um, got my hair done with like a finger wave. I was, I wish I knew how to do that myself. Like it was amazing, I loved it. And then for Emily's wedding, I did a very, very soft eye, probably not even as dark as this. Um, and her color for the dresses was like a champagne. Jen's is a baby pink, obviously, if you see in my bridesmaid video, bridesmaid's dress video, sorry. You would have seen the options. They're actually right behind me back there. <laughs> They're still hanging there. I just haven't taken them down yet. And I think this makeup goes with pink. I mean, I'm wearing this pink right now and I feel like it goes, even though it's like an orange, the eyes actually really tie it together because this, the pink sparkles of, of this color pop was really coming through. So I like how that kind of tied it together. I am good with that. And now I'm gonna move on to some blush. I'm gonna be using this Sulawasu Radiance Blusher in Coral Harmony, number two. So nice little coral moment over here. I always do coral blushes. I don't really use pinks too much. I think coral just looks nice on me and it's an easy one. So I'm just gonna swirl in there. And do that. This is one of these, um, what do you call this? Like a tapered? Du dual fiber. <laughs> dual fiber brush. I always find that these just really disperse blush colors really nice and helps blend really pretty. And this blush too also has a little bit of highlight in there. So I just, I'm quite light with the blush. So I have a little bit of blush there. Gonna do the same thing on the other side. I think in weddings, just do what makes you feel comfortable in terms of makeup. If you're using a makeup artist, you gotta have a test run beforehand, cause I mean, maybe if you're just a guest and it doesn't, you know, you're fine. You could do your own makeup, but if you are getting married or if you're a bridesmaid, like, might be a good idea to do a test run. It's worth the money to see if this person actually knows how to do your makeup. Also, if you have a particular way of doing something, go ahead and do it yourself. A makeup artist should not and most likely will not get offended by you saying like, hey, I'm gonna do my brows myself. You know what you like and it's on your face. So you should 100% vocalize like, hey, if something's starting to not work out, if you're seeing something, it's like too dark, say it then because it's much 
better for you to say it right there in the moment than for this person to be doing your makeup and then after all that you being like, I don't like this, you know? It's easier for them in, in the long run, so. I feel like a lot of times people don't want to offend makeup artists, but like they're not going to be offended by you knowing your own face. Like you're the one who has to live with it, you know, <laughs> at least for the next few hours or for eternity when it comes to, to photos. So yeah, just be vocal. For highlighter now, we are going to go in with my fave, my baby. This is the Artist Couture Jackie Ina Diamond Glow Powder in La Peach. This is my favorite highlighter forever, y'all. And I'm using the, um, Fenty Beauty Highlighting Brush. I love this brush so much. Gonna go in, in the cap. This is just like a peachy, warm, golden, sparkly highlight. Okay, you ready for this? So with this brush, what I tend to do is I will pat it on in the area like this and then flip it and then blend out. So it's like concentrated where I want it to be and then I blend it out a bit and then I go up and then do this a little bit. <laughs> Do you see that? <gasps> okay, other side. Man, I love this highlighter so much. I feel like I need to get one more bottle just in case, I don't know, something happens. Just need to stock up, because if I ever was without this, I'd be sad. Maybe I went a little bit overboard just now. Okay. Might have gone a little overboard. I always do that when I'm filming because I just get too excited. But okay, it's fine. And now what we're gonna do is put it on the uh, brow bone as well. I sometimes do it with this brush, but right now I'm gonna do it with this one right here. This is a very interesting one by um, Real Techniques. It is their 102. I don't know if it was just for a special collection. It's like a triangular shape. I think you could just do this with like a concealing brush that's like just a little bit stiffer, but I like that it's kind of pointed. So I just like dip into it with the flat side, not the flat side, like the widest flat side. And I will go right under there. So you see how it just kind of fits under the brow bone really nice. I don't know what this brush is meant to be for, but I just started using it for this and it is my go-to because it can really just goes right underneath there. On the other side as well. Oh yeah. I always like filming during this time, which is like five to 6 p.m. because I just feel like you get to really see my skin. Sometimes like if it's daylight, it just is a little bit too blown out, but also it just means that the light really changes rapidly, but in a way it's not a bad thing. So you kind of like see stages of what my skin actually looks like right now. I don't know if that makes sense, but during this time is always my favorite time to film. And then when it starts even setting more and then it's golden hour, it's not even hour, it's like golden 15 minutes. <laughs> I love filming during that time too, but anyways, okay. So the face is done. So what we're gonna do now is the lashes and then I'm gonna go into lips. I have two lip options we're gonna look into, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put on my falsies, which are, okay, I have them right here because I wore them yesterday. These are Ardell Wispies. Um, I don't know the number, sorry exactly, but they're Ardell Wispies. I cut them down a little bit to fit my eyes better. The mascara that I'm gonna be using first, the Seals Booster XL by Lancome as a primer, and then the Too Faced Better Than Sex. I'm gonna be putting this on the upper and the lower lashes first, and then I apply my eyelashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do that, and I'll be right back. Eyes are done. I had a bunch of mascara and added my lashes. I am getting better and better at putting these lashes on. I can't believe it. This one is still drying a little bit, so there's some white there, but we're gonna go ahead and go into some lippies. So here I have the Hourglass. It's like Girl, I don't know the full name. Is it just called Girl? This one is an influencer. It's one that I've used a lot in the past. And then I also have the Fenty Mademoiselle in Single. So I'm just gonna swatch this in the back of my hand, see which one I kind of want for this look. I really do like this color a lot. It's a nice lip color. I think they might be quite similar though. Hmm. I'm wondering which one I like better for this and for the dress as well. I feel like the fancy one, which is this one down here, 
would probably be a better bet because it's matte and it's longer lasting. I do really like the color of the hourglass one though. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go with Fenty for this. Yeah, I think this is a good choice. Mm -hmm. I think this is the look, y'all. I really like it. It's glam, but like an understated glam. It's not like too full on. I got a real nice even coat on my skin. So we're gonna have some real good photos. Not gonna be splotchy. I think with flash, this would do wonderfully. So I know, of course, throughout the day, I am gonna, gonna need some blotting. It's gonna be hot. So no matter what, there's gonna be some moving around just a little, little bit, you know, but I have no problem blotting and then putting like a little bit more powder on throughout the day. But I really don't think this is gonna be too much of a hassle. I'm so excited for this wedding. I'm so happy for Jen. Ben is just such a wonderful man. Like I couldn't ask for a better person to be my best friend's partner in life, you know? So I'm just excited. It's coming up real, real quick. <laughs> and I'm really glad I have all this sorted now. I'm glad I did this test run. So really know how everything's gonna look day of. It's gonna be a pretty minimal stress situation, I think. So yeah, if you like this video and you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below. Come join the sisterhood. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I love y'all and I will see you in the next one. Bye.